Nepalese residents observed Sunday the devastation left behind by a major 7.9 magnitude earthquake that left at least 2,300 people dead and 4,700 injured. Rescue workers worked long hours among rubble and desperate search for survivors. Hundreds remained missing. Thousands were left homeless by the worst quake in 80 years that destroyed hundreds of buildings. The population was overcoming fear and panic as replicas kept rocking large areas of the country. 31 tremors have been felt in the last 24 hours, including one 6.7 magnitude. Authorities fear that death tolls will increase. Hundreds of people remain missing. Most of the victims and destruction were reported in the country's capital, Kathmandu, with more than 2,000 fatal victims. We are working in this uh, rescue program since uh, 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 1 o'clock yesterday. And we are continuously we are working here. And we, uh, we will uh, do our job. Uh, continuously uh, after we rescue him uh, we have this recently uh, just before we rescued for uh, 15 people uh, next uh, building uh, opposite to this building uh, we have just, they are all alive they are all alive and uh, more more than uh, 50 people are there yesterday we beat on Dabshinkali uh, it's a temple in the south of Kathmandu and uh, um, the earthquake was also quite strong there and everything was shaking, all people got into panic. Seven months have gone by since the tragic attack on Ayotzinapa students in Iguala, in the violent Mexican state of Guerrero. On the night of September 26, police attacked the bus carrying dozens of students. They killed three of them on the scene, while three civilians were also shot dead. 43 students were abducted by the police. According to official versions, they were handed over to local drug gangs who burnt them to ashes. The remains of only one student has been identified, while the rest are yet to be found. The case has caused international condemnation and widespread protests around the world. But to date, in spite that around 100 people have been arrested in connection to the case, the government has failed to lay charges against anyone for forced disappearances. The families continue to fight for justice and are still demanding loved ones be found a life. Thousands of people marched through downtown Baltimore on Saturday to protest the death of yet another unarmed black van victim to racist police brutality. Pockets of violence erupted when a small group smashed windows and threw bottles at officers. At least 2,000 demonstrators attended the march to City Hall. This was the largest turnout since 25-year-old Freddie Gray died a week after his spinal cord was fractured and police neglected to grant him medical attention. As night fell, about 100 protesters splintered from the group and threw bottles, metal barricades and other objects at police officers and their cruisers. Twelve people were arrested as Frederica Gray, Freddie's twin sister, joined Baltimore Mayor Stephanie Rowling Blake at news conference where she urged people to keep calm. A, a transparent investigation. We wanted a quick investigation. I think the longer that they drag this investigation out, the people are going to be more inclined to think that they're going to, they're going to cover this up again, like they've been doing a lot of other um, uh, homicides or police-related homicides of uh, black unarmed men and black unarmed women in this country. Police brutality exists in every community. Whether it's a black suburb or a black inner city neighborhood, these guys do this. They oppress us. They abuse us. And then they come and cover it up with all type of lies. Air raids, naval shelling, and ground fighting shook Yemen this Sunday. This is some of the most widespread combat since March 26, when the Saudi-led alliance began its intervention against the Houthi rebels, who have seized widespread areas of the country. On Friday, the United Nations said at least 500 civilians have been killed in airstrikes, including more than 115 children. The UN also said millions of people have been affected by the conflict and are struggling to access health care, water, food, and fuel. Amid the increased violence, a new UN envoy was looking to kickstart peace talks in the war-torn country between the Houthis and the pro-government forces. Hundreds of mourners marched on Sunday in a funeral procession in Hebron for a Palestinian who was killed by Israeli forces in the occupied West Bank over the weekend. Chanting Israeli slogans and waving Hamas and Fatah flags, the mourners carried the bodies through the streets of the West Bank city ahead of the burial. Angry Palestinians face off with arbitrary Israeli security forces who have long history of harassing them. 
The residents of the Gaza Strip witnessed a night of tension yesterday's night after the Israeli media reported that two rockets, two missiles, were fired from the Gaza Strip towards Israeli settlements across and around the border with uh, the Gaza Strip. Uh, Israeli forces answered back by shelling homes and some farms located in northern Gaza and Beit Hanun area. However, there was no uh, injuries reported from the Palestinian side and there was also no injuries reported from the Israeli side when the uh, two missiles from Gaza landed on the uh, uh, Israeli settlements. However, the residents were fearing last night and also this morning and also the next a uh, few days that the Israeli uh, side will escalate because of these uh, rockets that were fired from Gaza. Let me also add that no Palestinian political faction, no Palestinian resistance brigade claimed any responsibility for the firing of the missiles. And also the Israeli media reported that it's 100% not uh, militants from Hamas uh, whom fired these uh, missiles because uh, both Hamas and Israel are trying to keep the uh, truce holding. The St. Lucia's government and the Taiwan International Corporation and Development Fund have signed a memorandum of understanding to provide island-wide wireless internet access in the Caribbean nation. A total of 17 Wi-Fi spots will be established in five districts across the island nation. Our correspondent, Allison Kentish, has the story. The necessary infrastructure will be placed in key public spaces and areas such as libraries, schools and tourist attractions. While computers are becoming the norm in many homes, there are still many people who require centers such as these at which they can access the internet and other IT resources. Moreover, there is also the need for facilities where IT-based training can occur. The last national census conducted in 2010 showed a large disparity in internet penetration between the north and south of the island. Residents of communities expected to benefit from this initiative are hoping it will go a long way in improving internet availability in rural and low-income areas. Everything has become internet, right? And, and the lack of internet would keep a nation and the whole back. And um, the rural areas need that because these are the less developed areas and these are also the people who are less fortunate. So bringing internet to those areas is a good initiative and it's a way forward for the country in general. Yeah. Another resident, Shannon LeBourne, says the initiative has the potential to transform lives and communities. As you know, internet um, penetration in this region is, is minimal and any assistance that we can receive to ensure that um, in inter in internet penetration can, can be increased and we have uh, more access to the internet for our students and our young people and even for the elderly, I think that will aid in the development of um, the region and the development of our people. Giant project will run from 2015 to 2018. The goal of the project is to increase the internet penetration rate from 11% to 30%. Government is hoping to take the overall access rate to 50% by embarking on a number of smaller internet projects during this period. Alison Kentish, Telesur, St. Lucia. Facts that have marked the course of history. Productions designed in the English language and made for the English-speaking world. This is Documentary. Watch it on telesur.net slash English. Telesur, wherever the news You'll be there.